a very very interesting topic is there when we are talking about the talent management so we also find out that is the odds of success in picking the right ceo and how to do that right and so it is one paper i always mentioned that is how to identify the ceos in the class right so here also we will just talk about how to identify the ceos the contents are the introduction mm. Walls model uh, the drive success, creating CEO success profiles, candidate assessment, replacing the checkups with the MRIs, closing talent gaps, weighing build versus the buy decisions, and when build is the decision. So, when Alan Mule, the highest successful CEO of the Ford Motor Company, announced he was retiring in 2014, the move did not set off alarm bells with the investors. right analyst or the employees worried about finding a worthy replacement two years earlier ford has elevated mark fields to the role of chief operating officer and appointed him as a mules uh, here uh, apparent handing over to day to day operations as a part of a succession plan that continues to pay dividends for the resurgent automaker so whenever we are talking about the succession planning in the talent management we also discussed that is the how to make a succession planning because after the acquisition and deployment then we have to also the develop the talent so the talent development is the for this type of the situations when you have to select the ceos or the uh, any higher positions when the person uh, will uh, either promoted internally transferred right and then in that case the other another person has to take the chair that important chair and uh, in this case it is the in, the in the ford motor company right so he, he, it is very clear that is the when he is going in the 2014 then he has ensured two years earlier that is called the succession planning that is the how that role of the chief operating officer so because what is required for that that we will see in the further slides but one thing is very sure that is the decision making and running the business as a father so that particular concept that ownership ownership and relationship that is becoming a very very important aspect and the, for that purpose what is required this succession plan that continues to pay dividends for the uh, resurgent automaker if you are successfully doing any succession plan then definitely in nothing dividend like this because organization is into the safe hands and your thousands of employees and their families members they are safe this chief operating officer position that that has to to be taken as, as a highly responsible head of the family like we say in the hindu act that is the karta right so therefore it is just like a karta that is the head of the family the transition of ceo power was not quite so smooth at organizations like the hewlett packard hp city group and total the french oil giant so tran- there there is always hmm? it is it is not uh, so smooth the transition transition of the ceos right the examples have been given for the hp city group and total the the french oil giant is there and uh, always this is this is becoming a big issue not long after hp the lost 40% of its stock value 40% of his stock value ceo leo apotheker reports um, reports image from an hp director that the apotheker had been sold to the board and therefore if this type of these uh, issues arise then definitely the rest of the or- employees of the or- uh, organizations rest of the employees they are getting the uh, trumbled he vowed that it would not be happen again so apotheker's reign lasted less than a year so what's the model drive success 
with the hiring and firing of the CEOs as their chief responsibility, boards have a fiduciary duty to create strong succession management practices. Because when we are talking about the hiring and firing means they are coming having the tenure and then they are leaving. Right? So, it becomes very very important the responsibility of the board members because the leadership will be incomplete. If the board is not alert and it is not a short win, if the board is uh, uh, alert then it will be a long win, the impact will be seen after decades. And whatever the decisions have been taken earlier, whatever the leadership style has been adopted, whatever the team is created right? and that, that team creation, that decision making process, that performance right? that will affect after a long time, after a long time and for a long time both. So, in that case strong succession management practices in organizations they oversee. A recent global research study for corn, uh, corn ferry found that only one third of the respondents were satisfied with the outcomes of their executive succession programs. One third only they were su uh, successful that is they were satisfied that is the how they are the, the su uh, succession training program is going on. So, it means that that is a two third right that has not been found satisfactory or successful. So, they have, it is a very very alarming situation. Now, when we are talking about the talent management, why we are making the talent uh, development? The talent is developed to hold the responsibility in future. We are nurturing the talent, we are coaching them, we are making them equipped with the knowledge, skill, attitude and habit cash model. So, therefore, in that case it becomes very very important that is how their executive succession programs uh, that has to be made successful. So, these steps are identifying with the laser like precision the diverse requirements of a future CEO. Now, here we have to also understand two aspects future and CEO. So, when we are talking about the requirement of a future, so when I say like the 2050, so from 2020 to 2050, what type of the future is? What are the requirements? And therefore, you will find that different forums like the Economic World Forum and all and they keep on talking about the, the future uh, scenario and therefore, uh, the person who is uh, um, uh, going to be the leading the organization. Hmm? So, maybe for 5 years or maybe for 10 years right. So, that may be for the 25, 30, 35. So, the, then in that case what is the future, what are the future requirements? that is to be very very clear. If we are clear with the future requirements, then only we can match the CEO. So, we can match the CEO only when we are clear that is what is here. If it is the known or unknown or how far is from reality because of course, uh, we, uh, these, uh, this future, future is many times, uh, uh, most of the times you can say that is unpredictable and uncertain, but still with these management processes, we try the trend analysis, we try to identify the future, we predict the future and whatever the prediction is there that matching of the CEO hmm, in the future and CEO that is very very important. Now, here when we are talking about the evaluating CEO candidates using a multifaceted assessment process that employs validated science to deliver highly predictive results. <laughs> so, therefore, we apply our brain. And we try to judge, we try to measure 
that the performance and potential if you remember the performance appraisal and the potential analytics of the talented people. So, therefore, that employees validated the science that logic. Hmm? So, you apply different test and then you scientifically you identify the talent to deliver the highly predictive results that is yes this is a person ye banda hai jo kaam karega aur organization ko aage le jayega so therefore in that case there is the employees validated science to deliver the highly predictive results efficiently closing gaps between the ceo Hmm? that is uh, whatever the gaps are there and that is uh, closing the gaps between the CEOs talent required by effectively developing internal leaders or through external search it's a it's a very big issue and therefore in that case whenever we are talking about the developing the internal leaders then who are the internal leaders those who have been working in that organization since long and uh, they have given the, their blood and sweat for the development of the organization and then now they are looking for the leadership position and the board decides that there will be the more politics in the organization. So, it is better to go for the external search it itself will become a challenge even the person from the external search comes here then he is required to lead these internal leaders also and most of the time he will ignore these internal leaders because of the threat and then the organization will not be successful organization. So, here it is very important like we have to find out with the laser like precision the diverse requirement of a future CEO hmm? and on basis of that using a multifaceted assessment process and then uh, based on the science and predicting the highly predictive results and then efficiently closing this gap and understanding the requirement whether we want from the internal search or from the external search. This critical business process is the lifeblood of successful companies, hmm? uh, where the if this business process is the successful and functions optimally when fully integrated into a company's talent management strategy. Here is the challenge of the whole concepts of your talent management strategy. We may keep on saying at junior front line managers, at middle management levels, up to this certain top level executives that we are going for the talent management, we are going for mentoring, we are going by the reverse mentoring, we are learning, we are developing. But when you are talking about the top level leadership, CEO leadership, and there you are nurturing the talent, and now the question arises the talent has to deliver. And that is becoming the very, very fully integrated. It, it uh, functions optimally for the talent management strategy. What is your strategy and what are your results? Right. The process also benefits when a CEO takes a lead role in planning. Right. So, therefore, the previous CEO, like in the case of the Ford Motor Company example, is given. So, therefore, in that case, it is the previous CEO, uh, our current CEO who is going to be the retired. So, then takes a lead role in planning. The board members should ensure that succession planning starts early and that CEOs contribute to identifying a field of potential candidates. So, in this case it was a 2 years no? the, you will ask the question sir uh, when it is to be started. So, naturally the suggested from the literature is it is a 2 years. 2 years before of these uh, uh, the end of the uh, CEO ship of the current uh, CEO he should start to look uh, in the consultation with the board members to develop a new CEO and the way the organization develops and therefore, you identify the competency that we will see how it is to be done. Identifying a field of the potential candidate 
who will be the next CEO. So, that talent management strategy that is the answer and that will create the CEO success profiles that will make the CEO successful. The first step in the world's future creation of a CEO success profile that details four key dimensions needed for the success. It is a, uh, I hope you will appreciate these inputs. First is the experiences, second is competencies, third is traits and fourth is the drivers. Now, the CEO's position, what is required? Experience, but what type of experience? We will take one by one. Within the context of the specific and examine, each dimensions have been examined within the context of the specific business strategies. Now, here one question arises. And the question is uh, that is uh, many times we see the cross functional CEOs, hmm? they are becoming the uh, uh, successful leaders. But when we talk about the expertise and in that expertise job knowledge is becoming very, very important and therefore, this experience right and in the specific business strategies that is preferred I will use the word preferred because particularly in India also we have seen that is the ex experiences are there but not necessarily in the specific business strategies, but they have become the successful leaders are there. Many times uh, it is the even the uh, that army officers, they, they are becoming the directors of the academic institutes, the IS officers, they are becoming the chairman of the certain uh, uh, societies and then they are leading that out those organizations and making it successful. So, uh, in general, what we talk in talk about in the business in general experiences with the specific business strategies that will help. Now, second one is the competencies. These competencies are related to outperform the competition. In relevant needed to outperform the competition. So, they are required the experience in the business strategies and their competencies should be able to uh, per need to perform or perform the competition in the market. And if it is so, then definitely the CEOs, the talent identification and then the succession planning that will be successful. Strategic mindset and decision quality this is very, very important. What is a decision? Decision is always a choice. Why a person takes a particular choice and then either he becomes successful and happy or he regrets and said for that whatever the decision he has taken. If maturity is playing a role, then definitely then decision that has to be the successful decision. But if there is an immaturity, then it will be becoming very difficult that is how decisions are to be taken. So, this decision strategic mindsets and the decision quality that is the how the he is taking the decision is important. The strategic mindsets are there and those strategic mindsets are that is about how you are taking the particular right decision 
and uh, if uh, the person is used to go by the long term policies, strategies and then uh, taking the decision naturally the decision quality will be high. Now, in this the global perspectives or examples of competencies that likely will be required. So, when we are talking about the Vasudhya Kutumbam and then we are talking about the uh, in the Vasudhya Kutumbam, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, the global leadership and we are talking about the global that is the uh, uh, competition at the global level and, and uh, uh, support by the local level. So, that global that global uh, leadership style that is becoming that uh, is uh, uh, very important. So, you are having the global perspective, but uh, making uh, your uh, activities, actions and decision making understanding the local conditions. So, therefore, in that case that will be will be required. Experiences could include a focus on functional track records. So, therefore, that experience will talk about that is how he has performed and how what he has done. International assignments because with the experience competencies traits and drivers. So, international assignments the way that is given and then he is having the international exposure or if required by the business strategy whatever the business strategy is there directing organizational turnarounds. And it is done, right? So therefore, in that case, that this type of the business international assignments, if required by the business strategies, directing organizational turnarounds are there because there is a global perspective, strategic mindset is there, and decision quality is mentioned. If an organization is undergoing transformation or pivoting to a new strategy, right? So therefore that that type of these uh, transformation is there right changing the whole organization transformational leadership so in the era of technology when you are adopting the technology so your organization is going into the totally different path and that is becoming the transformation of our this uh, leadership transformation leadership however it can go through the stepwise phases. So, there is a transactional and the space for a new CEO also should reflect a successor's capacity to execute shifting objectives. That is the it, it is this his capacity it is the what objectives were framed and now what objectives are to be designed articulated. So, that to execute the shifting objectives and emphasize personal traits like in the previous slide we are talking about the experience, competencies and traits. So, those personal traits like the agility, flexibility and tolerance for the risk checking that is becoming very very important. So, here it is required that whatever these personality traits are uh, there with those experiences and global uh, exposure and global uh, competencies right keeping in mind the local requirements that I mentioned local and the person himself is flexible that is why he can bring the change and the change in flexibility that will be creating the tolerance and the tolerance for the risk taking that is becoming very very important. Finally, success profiles should reflect an ability to balance short term execution with long term strategic thinking. So, that, that particular successful profile it should reflect a, that is the what type of the there is a short term execution and there is a long term strategic thinking is there. So, therefore, we can say that is the it is important for the making the CEOs that he can have the execution which may be for a short period of time, but these steps of execution are integrating with the strategic thinking long term strategic thinking are there. Now, whenever we are talking about the candidates assessment replacing checkups with the uh, checkup MRIs. So, in the second step of the succession 
organization should create a four dimensional whole person view of candidates. That assigns as much weight to the less tangible, but critical factors like traits and drivers at is does key experiences and competencies. It, it is uh, out of those four experiences, competencies, traits and drivers, then it becomes very, very important that is the assigns as much weight to the less tangible, but critical factors hmm? that is the what, what are those as it does take the experience and competencies that individuals uh, that capability for the traits and drivers. Candidate assessment in many organizations remains akin to having a 15 minute diagnostic discussion with a physician about a medical problem. So, there it is becoming a very, very interesting that is a, there is a physician about a medical problem. A whole person science based assessment on the other hand in tantamount to putting candidate through a magnetic resonance imaging that is MRI test. So, whenever he is having that type of the interaction. So, that is the that is the MRI scanning. Evaluating CEO candidate should be multifaceted process that include interviews. After these phases of the eligibility criteria, now the screening criteria and the interviews and extensive exposure of the candidate to a board simulation and psychometric assessments, reference checks and more are there, which are the common practices are there. So, that if it is an external candidate is there. Right. Otherwise, reference checks for the internal candidate is not required, but in the if it is a candidate is coming from the outside in the, into the organization appearing for the interviews, then definitely the psychometric assessments and reference checks are more required. CEO simulation exercises can predict with great accuracy, right? that is what type of the simulation is required and how candidates will behave in these challenging scenarios. If they are going for this the in this challenging uh, scenarios, then there it will be possible that they, they will be having the great accuracy is there. Uh, that is why when on the basis of this experience, competencies, trait and drivers and then the interview extensive exposure of the interview and uh, multifaceted process right, then definitely in that case uh, we can find out that is the chances of great accuracy is there that behave in this challenging scenario you can predict. So, you can predict that in a given situation how he will be behaving. Advancements in assessment science also can give the boards a more accurate gauge of the candidate states and drivers assessment science assessment centers allowing boards to filter out those with a dubious moral compass or who possess personality characteristics that can imperil a company. So, through the psychometric test that can be also identified. Traits and drivers also need to align with a company's strategic direction, that is what type of the direction is there. Companies in a startup or a turnaround situation might be tempted to favor CEO candidates hmm? with the deep knowledge of the industry, a good grasp of the emerging trends or the allied subject matter expertise is there. So, it, it will be also depend on the organization's life cycle. The organization is what what stage. Companies in a startup are a turn around situation that might be tempted hmm, to favor the that is the how if it is a startup is there then definitely what type of the leadership will be required that is more risk taking will be required and a turn around situation is required is experience and his competencies uh, those parameters that might be uh, tempted. So, therefore, to favor CEO candidates with deep knowledge of industry a good grasp of the emerging trends or the allied subject matter expertise is there. So, closing trend gives weighing build versus the buy decisions in the third and final step of the succession walls organizations close gaps between the CEO talent required and the talent available for the job. So, what is required and what is available companies either opt for the build the strategies developing leaders from within or the buy hiring outside to fill the top leadership roles are there. And finally, we can say additional factors also will weigh into the build versus buy decision such as 
how quickly CEO positions need to be filled, compensation issues, are the external forces buffet, buff, um, buffeting a company that may require leaders from outside of the organization who are uniquely equipped to drive new strategies or to write a listing ship. So, therefore, it will depend on the organization and board members that is what they are looking for. If they want to be a builder leader, then therefore, that through the succession planning, they have been given that particular training, two years uh, there the, he has been trained, uh, he, he is already known for the culture and then he will be taking the right decisions or when you are talking about the buying, then all the psychometric test is there identifying the global exposure, his ex uh, experiences, his personality traits and then understanding that this will be, so then you are buying that particular leader. So, organizations who are uh, that they, they have to identify what new strategies are to write a listing shape they want to be may, may require the leaders from outside if they are looking for the leader as a uh, as a, a as a uh, global exposure and there is no leader as a, as a part of the build the leadership then definitely it is better to buy by the leader so this is all about uh, this model or the developing the talent or nurturing the talent to become the CEO. Thank you.